let's hope that uh, agriculture uh, becoming more and more important in our lives, daily lives. Uh, the this paradigm with uh, uh, the poor guy and uh, uh, working in agriculture with uh, will be changed. And now I want to link with the next question to you. How do you see the regulatory uh, uh, issue in Europe regarding the reducing the fungicide, reducing the dose rate per hectare? I, I, I certainly hope that there will be a review. The big problem in Europe is science is being abandoned. Nearly all new medicines and drugs are now created by, through biotechnology. But biotechnology is banned from agriculture. We can't have GM crops of biotechnology. We can't have that in agriculture. We cannot plant because we can find yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on the yeah. open market because it's free to import for, yeah. Yeah. from to Argentina. Use, but and, we can't yeah. plant it, we can't grow it. And, yeah. and and so they're taking away from us the things we need to grow conventional crops and they won't let us have the technology we need. And food inflation. You see, if you're in the European Parliament, your view of the world is totally different to an elderly couple living in a little village in northeast Romania. Maybe you have a, a total pension of 1,500 lei a month and the present cost of fuel. Food inflation for you is so serious with that level of income. Food inflation to people in the West, who only up to now were spending maximum 10% of their total income on food, maximum, probably eight, 9% mm -hmm. on food. So there's going to be a view because food inflation is now a very serious issue for very many people in Europe. And a very telling sign of this, Bogdan, our organic business produces quite a lot of tons of organic produce. Not one ton of it is sold in Romania. It's remained, it it yeah. all goes to Switzerland, Germany, or Austria. It's, it's, and so the regulation in Europe, I, I, I hope there will be a rethink. But one should never underestimate politicians' ability for stupidity. They, because at the end of the day, they have to get re-elected and they have to go with populism. And they will really go with the masses and the, the opinion farmers. They're not really worried about farming and farming opinion, but maybe the price of food will change that. We, we met each other uh, a long time because uh, uh, one of our uh, common friends yeah. uh, working in, the, uh, in agriculture uh, gave us opportunity to meet each other. And uh, we start our discussion with uh, um, a roundup with glyphosate. Mm -hmm. How do you see the, the future of glyphosate in the, in the agriculture? Well, for the likes of what we're trying to do to grow cover crops and no-till, Roundup being banned is a disaster. Every time you cultivate, you release more carbon. Everyone is talking about smart agriculture and sequestering carbon. So the politicians have to make up their mind. They either want to sequester carbon or they want to ban Roundup and increase food costs. We can produce crops much more efficiently, much more cheaply, and much more environmentally friendly with Roundup than with continuous cultivation. We are ruining our soil. The top 250 millimeters on the Earth's crust is what feeds us all. Yes. And we have damaged it more in the last 50 years to provide cheap food to the world than in the rest of the time of mankind. We've damaged it more in the last 50 years this has been happening. There's so much arable land being lost every year. So much arable land. Desertification, soil, topsoil loss. So there has to be a huge rethink in all this. You, you saw because you are uh, uh, using a lot of uh, Roundup in your farm because it's, this is part of your technology. You saw the price increasing at least three times. Yeah. Uh, I think at the European level, mm -hmm. Now, it's more clear that the usage of Randa in the future, or now at least mm -hmm. this year, is not because it's cheap, because it's an integrated solution to, to the wheat management. Mm -hmm. And it's not because we want to find solution, cheaper solution mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. and to make more money, then it's part of very sustainable 
and should be integrated in, in the uh, part of the sustainability as long we don't have other product. By the way, you think uh, uh, we can mix maybe two active ingredients and to have same results with maybe more environmental friendly impact? No, we have to be using more synthetic product. The actual amount of active ingredient per hectare will increase, not decrease. That, that is the issue. The issue we have at the moment is every environmentalist I meet is an expert farmer, but they've never grown a hectare of crop. But they're an expert farmer and they're setting the environment, the policy in Europe. Farmers and food producers are not listened to. The environmental lobby are listened to. And it is not based on science, it's based on their opinion. A farmer will farm for 40, 50 years. It's a very short time in the land cycle. Land goes on forever. Yeah. Generation, generation after generation. Some of my family are on their farm for 200 years. On their farms. In my home village, there's people in the village, the family name is in the village for 800 years. And so the land goes on forever. Next to my house, there's a graveyard. There's been a church on that site since 550 AD. Oh. There's been far crop growing in that area for at least 2,000 years before that. And so farming is a very old thing. And, but we have, in the last 50 years, done more damage. And if we want a sustainable world, we're going to have to change how we farm and how we treat our soil. And this thing about cheap food, where we decimate the land produce, is over. Organic farming isn't the way it's going to be done to feed the world. I remember, there's a new Germany to be fed every year. There's 80 million people, new people in the world every year. And, and, and that is rising and rising and getting more. And there's about 1.5 billion people who would like to move from one meal a day to two meals a day. So we're in a completely different world now. The, you know, cheap fossil fuels and cheap food, mm, not so sure. I want to touch with you uh, one very important for all of us. Uh, we are seeing now the price of all the inputs going up like crazy. The, what should we do this year with, uh, with the, our yield? We should sign, let's say, between the brackets, part of the yield now, or we should wait. How do you do in this? Because, you know, this is the most important. Um, if I could answer that uh, correctly, I wouldn't be sitting here doing this. this. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sitting in a beach in the Bahamas, yes. trading futures on my laptop, and, send, and just getting and money back me, to my bank account. Yeah. Send me messages about what um, should they do. What, okay, it's what, a new situation. How, how, in our situation, what we do is, firstly, we realize that we're not particularly smart, so we can't sell it all at the top of the market, because we'll never be able to be that smart. So what we do is we do a budget, the crop budget and say okay let's hope we can get these yields this is what we're going to aim to get and then we take information from chicago from the matif from the life in london taking the trade and saying where we think the price might be at very often we we'll, our budget figure will be say if we're going to sell rape in august that we'll have rape to sell in august we look at the the matif price for august and we take 40, 50 euros a ton off it for the price X farm here in Badashan. Yeah. And we'll say, okay. And then we will look and say, well, can we make money at this level of, at our level of cost, at that price, with this shield, can we make money? And once we're starting making money, we start selling a bit. If, if, if we, need, we, we need money in September for paying rent. So I, I already, we already have quite a bit sold for September, yeah. to make sure we have the money to pay the rent. If, if there's a ceasefire tomorrow in the Ukraine and everybody starts planting, the price falls out of bed. This is the idea because, you know, it's something that it's, today it's unpredictable. Mm. We discussed uh, uh, previous to have this uh, discussion on the field 
that if EU decide by one signature to take out the oil seed rape oil from the diesel mm. will be enough mm. uh, uh, yeah. oil for yeah. for uh, uh, let's say yeah. all the consumption and the price is possible to fall down mm. does it mean that part of the this is also my uh, uh, my way to think in the at least this year to go safe yeah to calculate how much I am putting in, the cash flow is also very important for all of us, mm -hmm. yes, and to go signing on, not maybe not now, but maybe in one month or two months from now, a quantity, because at the average, mm. uh, uh, I think uh, it is the best, the average price, because like you mentioned, we cannot reach the top all the time. No, not yeah. possible. Don't think you're that. I certainly no. No, I'm not that smart. So we don't try and do that. One of the things I think on the risk management side is very important. You have to be far more careful in Romania than say on my farm in Ireland, because if my yields in Ireland move back fifteen percent, it's a disaster. Yield is just so consistent because we have a lovely climate. Yeah, we have a, it. Now it rarely goes above twenty-five degrees. You plant your repeats in August, you have the following August, and when we fall, come below 4.5 tonnes of repeats, we say, what's happened? For me to have to recede repeats is like the end of the world, and rarely ever happens here in Bata Shan, it's every second year. The risk, because the climate is so much riskier here, so you really have to be much more careful here in Romania because of the risk, the severity of the, of the climate. So. We certainly have greatly reduced the spend in our crop. And I think it's very important to realize there is, we look at response curves all the time. What will corn, how will corn respond to nitrogen application? There's huge research available, particularly from the American universities, the farm universities, great research. And we look at that and we look at response curves all the time. But because of the risk factors and the amount of money we have on the table, we certainly have been moving back our inputs and being much more careful. I was at a talk online with a professor of risk management many years ago at Harvard University to f people running large farming businesses. And he said, a normal business has its inputs, it has its production and has its sales. There are its big risk factors. But in farming, you also are under the sky. There's no roof over your factory. So you really, so he said your risk factors go crazy in comparison with some other businesses. It is very difficult for a guy running a large farming business to get 50% of his decisions correct. It's very difficult to get 50% correct. He said what separates the really brilliant guys from the poor guys is that when the decision is made and it's wrong, it's seen as wrong quickly and it's corrected. And so, you know, it's, it's to make the decision decision, do the analysis, make the decision, but then to correct it quickly, you can't have this big ego and say, well, I made a decision, can't be wrong. No, I'm not the Pope, I'm not infallible. Yeah. And, we, and, and, and I make, as I say to the young team here, I said, generally the mistakes above 10,000 euros, I make them. You know? So it, this, this is very important in the risk management.